Welcome to Confessions of an SEO. This is Carolyn Holtman. As you know, this is where we talk about the business end of SEO, the people side. From someone who's been there on both, a local business owner for over 28 years and a reformed client SEO of 12. Now an SEO researcher, tester, and consultant. Yada, 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 right? So if you're an SEO, this is all for you. And if you're a business owner, I hope this helps you understand how to hold an SEO accountable, to have a better idea of what's in their bailiwick and what is in Google's, so that you can evaluate results in an informed way without chasing away the good SEO you hired. Well, this is episode 50, the big 5 uh, That really sounds like a nice number. And what that actually means is we're down to the last three in 2021 after this week. So yay us. Quick note, um, I'm not gonna close down the annual survey until the end of the year. So you have three more weeks where you can take two minutes, that's just 60 seconds and uh, times two. Um, so you could take that, that time and just get it done. I really, really appreciate it. And it's being very helpful and insightful. And um, I look forward to um, over the holiday, really putting some of that uh, together to create something for 2022 that, that you want. So yes. There's not too late to participate. Uh, there'll be a link in the description if you're on the computer. And if you're not, but you have a good memory, let me give you the short link. Cause you know, I like the bit.ly links. That's bit.ly slash confessions survey, all one word. And when you do it right, there are two S's in the middle. Uh, it's easy to remember. And I have uh, pinned the survey link on American Way Media's Facebook page. So plus, if you're still reluctant to write anything down, next time you're in front of your computer, you can just Google Confessions of an SEO Survey. And you'll see lots of places that you can click on and find the link on those pages. See, I know a thing or two about search. So I thought this week we'd be talking about backlinks like I was, was all ready to do it. I had a great title, I think you'll like it. Um, but I don't think we're going to do backlinks this week. Everywhere I turn, I literally cannot escape either the actual state of indexation or people talking about the state of index, uh, indexation. Now for the uninitiative, an, an initiative, the uninitiated, um, and maybe a, a refresher for, uh, those that work in this all the time and a little invitation to step back for a minute. Indexation is the first step in any online information process. So if you haven't recently read Google's How Search Works documentation, well, you're missing out on some riveting ways to count the number of angels on pinheads. Um, I'll put the URL in the description, but you can also Google it. It's the first result. Um, this is a more accessible version of the technical document affectionately known as Google's Webmaster Guidelines. Now, the Webmaster Guidelines are more along the lines of a punishment and warning style series of advanced documentation. It's the equivalent of, and I know we've all heard this before, don't make me stop this car because I will unless you settle down. We all know where we heard that the first time. Now, I will also put a link in the description to the Webmaster Guidelines. Um, basically, I'll, I'll give you the short version. There are four things that work in tandem so that like when we settle down in front of our laptops or screens and we wanna look up ax throwing team building options in our city. Vignet, thank you for that one. Um, but when we do look things up, we, we find things related to what we, we typed in. So at least in the beginning, you know, Google was all about how to organize all the information in the world. According to Google, for search to work, it needs four things. And these four things are discover, crawl, index, and rank. I will explain for those that are about to roll over in their, 
<laughs> wherever you're sitting. All right, discovery. Um, these are things we do to make sure uh, our sites can be found. Basically, we add in the things that do or do things that tell search engines that, you know, hey, we're here and make sure that we remove anything that basically is uh, kind of like what we do on uh, uh, with our house lights on Halloween where we, we turn them off so that no one comes by looking for candy. And just for the record, at our house, I give out chocolate until I have no more to give. But uh, this discovery preparation is a, a subset. Some people think of it also as technical SEO. It's the things that are totally 100% within your own control. All right, next one is crawl. Now this one happens when a search engine finds through some method, either that you handled in the, in the first part, um, it finds through a discovery process that there's a site or a page out there that they either don't already have or they haven't crawled it in a while and so they wanna go back and check it again. Now this is done by what we call bots, spider bots. And I'll get back to those, but basically it's like in the matrix when those scary little spider machines find out where the humans are hiding. I'll give you a moment to remember that fear. <laughs> okay. Um, the next one is index or indexation. And this is where now we can start to see our content being confirmed in places like Search Console. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, SEOs do. If you're a business owner, you, you can Google it. Um, so this is a, a place where Google gives you feedback and tells you that you know it found it or like in Bing Webmaster Tools, uh, they do the same thing. And um, in the old days, this, this indexation part and the fourth part used to coincide almost together. Well, that is the ranking. And ranking is where you search for a word or a phrase in either Google or Bing, and it delivers your page results because they're all, they're all indexed. That means they're in an index, right? And sorted into an order, which is ranked. And that's, you know, that's where we are today. Uh, well, no, that's not where we are today. That's where we were. Where we are today is that fairy tale that I just described, how those last two things just sort of automatically happened, you know, without us thinking about it. Well, now it's sort of an apocalyptic nightmare. For all of us testers out there, we're dealing with new pages all the time. And, and that's why we use them, because when you're testing, you have to have a page really that doesn't have any history. Because um, if you had a page that had history, there might be some factors uh, in that page that uh, might pollute our tests and thereby mess with our findings. So for right now, for new content, attempting to follow the procedure that we've done for decades, it ain't happening. Now, why should that be? You know, I, I thought this past summer, I called it the summer of updates. You know, it was the, the constant threaten of the core web vitals. We're gonna do it this month. Nope, we're gonna do it next month. Nope, we're gonna do it by August 31st. So after all of that, this past November puts all of that to shame. I mean, we have had so many updates, one right after the other, one on top of the other, that we really can't tell when one is stopped or one begins. And one thing I can say for sure, um, seem to have picked a really interesting time to do a public test project tracking the indexation process on, on one of my test sites. Now, I, I started doing this back in August when I was young and full of optimism. But now, over a hundred days into this, all I got to say is, what unholy hell is this? So a little background, why I would say that. Earlier this year, I was working on a project that incorporated a fair amount of JavaScript in it. And um, if you don't know what JavaScript is, it's, it's basically content that um, 
gets called into the page. Um, it, it has to go through a, a, a process of rendering. And when that project started, I mean, things were going great. It was adrenaline city. The world was an oyster. And I don't really know what that means because I hate oysters, but I think you get my drift. Then, unexpectedly, the bottom fell out. I mean, everything that was going great was now not going great. But why? And started testing to see if Google was rendering JavaScript and much to everyone's chagrin, Google wasn't. And then it just as unexpected, unexpectedly started working again for a week. And then it stopped working again. Now, what makes this so important is that when JavaScript isn't rendered by Google and when the bots, are those remember those things that come and crawl, they, they take the code back to get processed. And when they bring it back to, um, to sort of be re reassembled back at Google headquarters, um, it now appears as like a blank page or mostly blank page. Now, spoiler alert, if you're not an SEO, um, Google doesn't rank blank pages. And in case you haven't noticed, they also don't tell you when they stop rendering JavaScript. Now, this experience was super frustrating and as many SEOs experienced, because you know, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the site, it wasn't the quality of the content, and it's just one day Google rendered and the next day they did not. And then several of us started testing just rendering. And, and that's pretty much how we, we figured it out. It wasn't divined from on high, it was literally under our noses. But what was interesting is that SEOs who are being blamed for this historic and dramatic loss of ranking for those heavily JavaScripted sites, they also blame themselves. Now there are two things I would love to have as an outcome from an indexation project during this time, which by the way, if you're curious, you can see the results page. It's updated daily. All you have to do is if you search for Google Index Detector. Now it's a primitive weather tool for new content, whether or not it's getting indexed. So first, we had this enormous shift going on everywhere. This, this you know, indexation was, was kind of at a standstill. And no one was talking about it. And I get that. No SEO wants to tell other SEOs that they're having indexation issues. I cannot tell you how many people interpreted results from that project as a request for them to help me index my test pages. But it may turn out that one of the results or one of the out, outgrowths of this project was getting SEOs admitting to other SEOs they couldn't get their pages indexed either. That's happening now. And while a non-indexation state is irritating and annoying, when we acknowledge it to ourselves and to others, it kind of takes the monkey off our backs. Which leads me to a second potential outcome. Putting the onus of indexation, or rather the beginning of indexation, on the shoulders of who is in charge of indexation. Now, who sends out those bots? Aha! That's at the feet of Google. Now, at the same time, we're going to cue the Google apologists, and I quote, Oh, they have so much content to index, poor Google. They just can't index poor quality content. And if you can't write quality content, well, just don't. Now, in my experience, what that is, it's another form of saying, you're doing it wrong. And I get it, right? We don't want to anger the Google gods. Here's a little fun fact. In Q3, 
all of Google's, Google's businesses remained steady and grew within expecta expectations, except one, search. Search, or the ad revenue from search, is pulling in 11 bi billion, that's with a B, billion more this year, 2021, than it did last year at the same time. Now I'll put the link to the, the article, you can look up the, you know, where this is coming from. I'll put it in, it's uh, an October Verge article. And um, uh, it's John Ehrlichman from uh, Bloomberg uh, Business News. So he kind of like goes through, compares like from, I think it's 2009 all the way up to, to this year, this third quarter. All right, so getting back to that, pesky indexation pity party for Google. One clue here that when there are updates flowing out, guess what gets turned off? Yeah, it's indexation gets turned off. And we know that because if you look at server logs and you know how to count, you can see that new content is not getting any love, zero from the Google bots. And just looking at the number of updates since January of this year and now, it would not be outrageous to say that at least 90 days out of this year, that's 25% of the year almost, nothing new was getting indexed. And that's why I'm really glad to see the industry conversation turn over to, the, to Google, albeit very slowly and very gently, but there are some voices that are asking at least for some semblance of accountability. I'm all for taking responsibility for when I need to do better. Shouldn't Google also admit if they're broken, overwhelmed, or choosing to, set to, to spend less of their resources to crawl? And by doing so, that would help SEOs and the businesses that hold them accountable to not have to take the full heat for something that potentially puts their job at risk and for something that they could not have controlled. Is that too much to ask? All right, I'm gonna step down off my box now. That's gonna do it for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you also for everyone who's taken the time to take the survey. I will not forget this favor you have given me. Please subscribe to Confessions where you're listening to it. It's on Audible, Spotify, Amazon Alexa, and if you haven't settled on one source for your podcasts, you can just Google Confessions of an SEO. You cannot miss it. Please let your friends know because all of us stand to make more business and success together when both the SEOs and the business owners understand each other better. It's been my pleasure to be your host. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the service.